Hey there, welcome to Module 12. In this course, we will cover workforce management. In this module, we will develop forecasts, evaluate intraday differences between forecast and actual values. We will generate and manage blank schedules, forecast-based schedules and schedules without forecasts. We will also monitor adherence to schedules and show agents their schedules and manage time off requests. If you are keeping track, this module will cover the workforce management section. Let's get started. In workforce management, business units enable customers to organize their agents and leverage permissions to meet business needs. Business units allow customers to configure agents who share queues into more than one management unit. The agent capacity for management unit is 1,500 agents. However, business units help alleviate this limitation by providing support for 5,000 agents. Companies can organize management units based on local management, permission requirements, and more. Forecasts and schedules run at the business unit level, and administrators can create the most efficient schedules by factoring in coverage from all agents in more than one management unit within the business unit. Click Business Units under the Workforce Management section. Then click Add. In the General tab, you can name the business unit name and change the business unit division with the required permissions and set the time zone and the day that starts the week. In the Forecasting tab, you can increase or decrease the number of weeks set in the Historical Weeks field. In the Scheduling tab, you can select or deselect to sync the payable time for a time-off request with the schedule, and you can modify the parameters set in the Validation Message Severity section. Set the service level to increase and decrease by a certain percentage. Set the average speed to answer to increase and decrease by a certain percentage. Set the abandonment rate to increase and decrease by a certain percentage. In Time Off Synchronization, check the box if you want to synchronize payable time between schedules and time off requests. Under Validation Message Severities, change the reporting severity of the scheduled generation validation messages under this business unit. Click Save when finished. Let's move on and create a management unit. A management unit is a collection of explicitly specified users from which you can set planning periods, adherence rules, time off rules, and shift trading rules. Make sure that your management unit name contains at least one character. It can be no longer than 50 characters. For a single organization, you can add up to 500 management units, up to 10 per business unit, and up to 1,500 agents per management unit. Click Management Units under Workforce Management. Click Add. The Add Management Unit page opens to the General tab. In the Management Unit Name text box, type a name for the Management Unit. To change the division associated with this Management Unit, click the Division list and make the appropriate selection. Let's set up Scheduling. Click the Scheduling tab. Under Maximum Occupancy Percent for Deferred Work, use the arrows to select the maximum percentage of time to fill for agents who handle both calls and deferred work. Under Start Day of Weekend, Change the weekend start date. By default, this constraint is set to Saturday. To set the start date for the planning period, enable Planning Period Settings. Under Planning Period Start Date, click the calendar and select a starting date for the planning period. To change the planning period from the default setting of one week, under Planning Period Length in Weeks, use the up and down arrows to set a new planning period length. To set the percentage allowed for agents assigned to a shift but who are unavailable to take interactions, Click Advanced Shrinkage. To change the interval to 1530 or 60 minute intervals, click the plus and menus buttons. The default is 15 minutes. In the default unplanned shrinkage box, specify the default shrinkage percentage that the system uses when no interval level shrinkage appears. The default is 0%. To change the percentage for specific times, click on the day and time you want to change and type in the percentage you want. If you press and hold Control, you can click multiple tiles and change all at once. Click OK. In the Adherence tab, under Severe Adherence Threshold, use the arrows to set the number of minutes after which an agent is considered severely out of adherence for real-time adherence monitoring. The default is 5 minutes. Under Adherence Exception Threshold, use the minutes and seconds up and down arrows to set the minimum threshold to include adherence exceptions and historical adherence. Under Adherence Target, Use the up and down arrows to set the minimum target adherence percentage for historical adherence. To consider not on queue activities equivalent for adherence calculations, enable activity equivalency. To ensure that not on queue activities are not considered equivalent for adherence calculations, disable this setting. 
to count on queue status outside scheduled ship time as an adherence exception. Enable working outside shift considered exception. To ensure that working outside the scheduled shift is not counted as an exception, disable this setting. To add activities you want to exclude from adherence calculations, in Ignore for Adherence click Select Activities and choose the appropriate activity or activities. In the Time Off Requests tab, to set the range of days for which agents create a time off request relative to the current date, enable Submission Range Constraint. Use the minimum and maximum up and down arrows to define the range of days. Click Save. Under the Shift Trades tab, to allow agents to trade ships, click Enable Shift Trading. To allow the system to approve shift trades that meet configured constraints automatically, click Enable Automatic Review. To allow agents to request a shift trade with a specific individual, click Enable Direct Trade Requests. Under Minimum Hours until either traded ship starts, use the arrows to define the number of hours before either shift is eligible for trade. Depending on the number set here, Agents cannot create trade requests where the first possible trade occurs less than the number of hours in the future. For example, if the minimum is 24 hours, agents cannot request trades for the current. Agents can request trades for shift 24 hours from now. This constraint gives agents and administrators proper warning about a change to the schedule that results from a scheduled trade. Optionally, select whether agents can only trade ships with agents in the same queue membership, language, or skills. Once set, Agents and administrators cannot override the criteria to create requests with non-matching agents. Under Agent Matching Criteria Requirements, choose any combination. Agents must have the same queue memberships. The agents must belong to the same queue. If the agent is in a different queue, they do not appear in the same schedule. Agents must have the same languages. Two agents can trade ships only if they have the same language skills. Agents must have the same skills. Two agents can trade ships only if they have the same ACD skills. Agents must be able to handle the same planning group. Two agents can trade ships only if the agent that receives the trade can handle the same planning group as the agent who is trading the ship. You can also set up trade rules. Ship trades with unequal paid time. By default, the system allows this constraint. Ship trades that are one-sided, which allows an agent to drop a shift but does not receive one in return. Another agent can pick up the shift, but does not give up one in return. By default, the system allows this constraint. Ship trades resulting in minimum weekly paid time violations. By default, the system sets this constraint to not allowed. Ship trades resulting in maximum weekly paid time violations. By default, the system sets this constraint to not allowed. Click Save when finished. Let's move on to service goal templates. Service goal templates are templates that you can set up to describe your organization's service goals. Assign these templates to one or more planning groups in the business unit. Service goal templates are based, in part, on the functionality previously known as service goal groups. However, with service goal templates, you can set service goals once and then apply them to one or more planning groups within the business unit. Let's create one. Click on Service Goal Templates under Workforce Management. In the Service Goal template, named text box, type a descriptive name for the template. Under Service Goals, enable the Service Goal Impact Overrides toggle. The Service Goal Impact section appears under each Service Goal section. This toggle is disabled by default and the system uses the Service Goal Impact percentages that you configure at the business unit level. When you enable this toggle, the system uses the values set in the Service Goal Impact section under each Service Goal for automated and self-scheduling features. Enable the service level toggle. Under interactions answered, use the percent up and down arrows to set the desired percentage of interactions answered within the time period. The default value is 80% and the acceptable values are 1 to 100. Under within time period, use the minutes and seconds up and down arrows to set the desired time period for the percent answered interactions. Under service level impact, Use the percent up and down arrows to set the desired upper and lower percentages of interactions. Answer that you want to automate it in self-scheduling features to schedule to. This section is only visible if service goal impact overrides toggle is enabled. Enable the average speed of answer toggle. Use the hours, minutes, and seconds up and down arrows to set the desired average speed of answer. Under average speed of answer impact, Use the hours, minutes, and seconds up and down arrows to set the desired upper and lower average speed of answer duration. You would like automated and self-scheduling features to schedule to. 
This section is only visible if service goal impact overrides toggle is enabled. Enable the abandonment rate impact toggle. Use the percent up and down arrows to set the desired abandonment rate percent. Under abandonment rate impact, use the percent up and down arrows to set the desired upper and lower abandonment rate percentage you would like automated and self-scheduling features to schedule to. This section is only visible if service goal impact overrides toggle is enabled. Now that we have created a service goal template, now we can create a planning group. Planning groups allow organizations to group forecasts together to help simplify the planning process. Click Planning Groups under Workforce Management. Click Add. Under Planning Group Name, enter an appropriate name for the planning group. Under Select a Service Goal Template, select a pre-configured service goal template to apply to the planning group. Under Media Type, select Voice, Email, Chat, Callback, or Message. Under Route Path Associations, click Add. The Search and Add Route Paths dialog box opens. For either route path selection, select the queue, language, and skill set. For Search for Route Path Selection, select the available route paths under the Route Paths with Conversations offered in the past six weeks box. For manually adding route paths, click Add and add another route path. Click Save when finished. Moving on, you can organize agents within the contact center into management units based on common planning period settings, adherence rules, time off rules, and ship trading rules. Agents that handle the same set of interactions should belong to the same business unit and can be spread across up to 10 different management units if different management rules or permissions are required. If there are more than 1,500 agents that require similar planning period adherence, time off, and ship trading rules, then they can be split across management units. Click on Agents under Workforce Management. Click Add, open the Add Agents dialog box and add one or more agents to a management unit. Select Listed Agents. Click the Add Agents to Work Plan button, choose a work plan, and add the agents to it. For sync changes, update the currently associated planning groups associated to the agents in the management unit. Clicking this will export the list of agents. Clicking this will reload the page with the most updated version of the agent list. The columns list out important information to give you a quick overview of the different data. These columns list the agent's name, if they are able to be scheduled, the planning groups they are a member of, the queues they are a member of, the languages and skills that are applied to them. Also, the work plan and work plan rotation, as well as the work team they are a member of. Atris indicates the Atris integration of the agent. Moving on activity codes or subsets of activity categories, which contain the activity codes. Use activity codes wherever you use activity categories. This feature allows you to customize and better define the activities your organization uses. Use activity codes in schedule editing of future, current, and past schedules. Administrators can use activity codes to help define scheduling needs. Click on activity codes. Let's create an activity code. Click on the add button. In the name box, type a short, descriptive name for the activity code. In the category list, select the required category. The primary status field displays the name of the category selected in the category code field in the activity code section. In the secondary status list, map the activity code to the specific secondary status. This enables granular adherence, tracking with a one-on-one -on -one relationship between the present status and activity code. You can select only those secondary statuses to which you have division permissions. To specify a default length of time for the activity, in the length area, use the up and down arrows to set the number of hours and minutes allotted for the activity. Select the Count as Paid Time checkbox if the activity counts toward paid time. Select the As Interruptible checkbox if the activity counts as interruptible. Select the Count as Work Time checkbox if the activity counts as contiguous or consecutive work time. To add another activity code, click Save and Add New. To return to the Activity Codes page, click Save. Next, let's dig into Work Plans. Use Work Plans to describe weekly, weekend, planning period, general, and day-level constraints. Workforce Management incorporates these constraints into the scheduling process. Let's create a Work Plan. Click Work Plans under Workforce Management. In the upper right corner, click the Management Unit list and select the appropriate Management Unit. Click Add. The Add Work Plan page opens. Click the Click to Add a Name box. Enter a valid name for the work plan and then click the check mark. Click the Weekly Paid Time box. Under the Weekly Constraints tab, select the Weekly Paid Time checkbox. 
To change the weekly paid time from the default amount of 40 hours, using the hours and minutes arrows, specify the number of weekly paid hours for this work plan. Define flexibility in the number of weekly paid hours for this work plan by selecting the Flexible Times checkbox. Under Minimum, use the hours and minutes arrows to set the minimum number of paid hours allowed for the shift week. Under Maximum, use the hours and minutes arrows to set the maximum number of paid hours allowed for the shift week. Under Minimum Scheduled Days Per Week, use the up and down arrows to change the default minimum of days to schedule an agent per week. By default, the minimum number is one day. Under Maximum Scheduled Days Per Week, Use the up and down arrows to change the default maximum number of days to schedule an agent per week. By default, the maximum number is 7 days. Under minimum rest hours per week, use the up and down arrows to change the minimum amount of rest hours to schedule an agent per week in hours and minutes. On the weekend constraints tab, change the maximum number of consecutive weekends an agent can work by selecting the maximum consecutive scheduled weekends box. Use the arrows to select the number of weekends. Under the Planning Period Constraints tab, under Minimum Days Off per Planning Period, use the up and down arrows to select the minimum number of days off an agent can take per planning period. Under Maximum Days Off per Planning Period, use the up and down arrows to select the maximum number of days off an agent can take per planning period. Under Minimum Paid Time per Planning Period, Use the up and down arrows to select the minimum number of paid time an agent can receive per planning period. Under Maximum Paid Time per Planning Period, use the up and down arrows to select the maximum number of paid time an agent can receive per planning period. Under the General Constraints tab, set the appropriate minute granularity for paid time by selecting the Daily Paid Time divisible by checkbox. Use the Minutes arrows to set the appropriate minute granularity for paid time. By default, the value for this setting is 15 minutes. Under Maximum Consecutive Scheduled Days, use the up and down arrows to change the default maximum number of days to schedule an agent. By default, the maximum number is 7 days. This constraint looks at consecutive days worked at the end of the last schedule as well as the current schedule period. Under Minimum Time Between Ship Starts, use the up and down arrows to change the default amount of time between the ship start times of two consecutive working days. By default, this number is 12 hours. Under Minimum Time Between Ships, use the up and down arrows to change the default amount of time between the shift end and the start time of the next shift. By default, this number is 12 hours. Specify the maximum ship start time variance for a select set of days by selecting the Maximum Ships Start Time Variance checkbox. Choose the ship start variance of either ship start or shift start and pay duration. Use the hours and minutes arrows to set the desired amount of time a ship's start time can vary. Click the day or days for which the ship's start time variance applies. To add another ship's start time variance, click Add Variance setting and repeat the previous steps. Click OK. After you set up the work plan's weekly, weekend, planning period and general constraints, configure the daily ships for use when creating and maintaining schedules. The work plan includes one shift by default. To add a shift, Click the Add button. To add days to the daily shift, click each appropriate day. The scheduling engine selects exactly one daily shift for each day of the week that contains more than one selected daily shift unless you select optional days. In this case, the scheduling engine can choose a daily shift or not. Under Optional Days and Work Plan, direct the scheduling engine to choose a daily shift for the day or not by clicking the day or days in the optional row. To configure the shift, click the shift name. In the name box, type a unique name or description for this shift. To select a specific start time for the shift, under Ship Start enter the shift's start time in standard time format. For example, 8 a.m. or 4.30 p.m. To allow for flexibility in the shift's starting time, select the Flexible Times checkbox. In the Earliest box, enter the appropriate earliest start time in standard time format. In the Latest box, enter the appropriate latest start time in standard time format. Under Increment, use the hours and minutes up and down arrows to set the amount of time between shift start times. In the Daily Paid Time area, use the hours and minutes up and down arrows to set amount of daily paid time for the shift. To allow for flexibility in the shift's daily paid time, select the Flexible Times checkbox. Under Minimum, set the minimum amount of daily paid time allowed for the shift. Under Maximum, set the maximum amount of daily paid time allowed for the shift.
to set contiguous work time constraints for the shift. Select the contiguous work time checkbox. Under minimum, set the minimum amount of time the agent must work before starting an activity that does not count as work time. Under maximum, set the maximum amount of time the agent can work before starting an activity that does not count as work time or before ending the shift. Set the days off rule by selecting the days off rule checkbox. Choose next day off or previous day off. Click OK. After you configure the work plan's daily shifts, you can set up shift activities. Select the activity that you want to add, and then use the cross button to drag an activity into the shift. To add an activity to the shift, click the arrow at the end of the activity code list and select the activity you want to add. Click and hold the add button, and then drag the activity to the appropriate location in the shift. Optionally use the sizing arrows to adjust the length of the activity. Repeat previous steps for any additional activities you want to add. To edit the shift activity, double-click the shift activity you want to edit. The Edit Activity dialog box opens. To change the activity, select the new activity from the list. Under Length, use the hours and minutes up and down arrows to determine the length of time the activity lasts. To specify that the activity start time is dependent upon the shift start time, select the start time as relative to shift start checkbox. Under Start Time, use the hours and minutes arrows to set the activity's start time in relation to the ship's start time. To set an actual activity start time, clear the start time as relative to ship start checkbox. Under Start Time, enter the actual activity start time. To set a flexible activity start time, select the flexible start time checkbox. Under Earliest Start, set the earliest time for this activity by typing in the box or using the hours and minutes arrows. Under Latest Start, Set the latest time for this activity can start by typing in the box or using the hours and minutes arrows. Select the amount of time to increment the activity start time using the hours and minutes arrows. The minimum length from ship start sets the minimum length required from the start of the ship until the start of the activity. The minimum length from ship end sets the minimum length from the end of the activity until the end of the ship. If the activity counts toward paid time, set counts as paid time BS. If the activity counts as contiguous or consecutive, work time, set counts as work time DS. Click OK. After you set up shift activities, you can add agents to the work plan. To add agents to the work plan, click the Agents tab and click Add. The Add Agents dialog box opens. In the Available Agents column, scroll through the list and click the plus button next to each agent you want to add. You can also use the Filter Items box by typing a few letters of the agent you want to add and then select it from the list. To add all available agents to the work plan, click the Add All button. To remove all agents from the work plan, click the Remove All button. Click OK. Now we can validate the work plan. When you create and validate a work plan, Genesis Cloud checks it for any issues. Resolve any errors before you save a work plan. You can save a work plan that has error warning informational or ignored messages. In the upper right corner of the work plan page, click the disk. Optionally copy information to the clipboard for review. Resolve any work plan errors. Click Save Anyway. As a planner, you can create ships that rotate, typically on a weekly basis. This action grants agents the opportunity to work all ships, both desired and undesired which balances the distribution of popular and less popular working times and days. Work plan rotations rotate through configured, enabled work plans on a weekly basis, even if the management unit includes multiple planning period weeks. When you select work plans, you can create a predictable pattern for the selected work plans and the system rotates them weekly. If a work plan is not enabled, you cannot add it to the pattern. Also, you cannot disable or delete an enabled work plan while it is in a rotation unless you first remove it from the rotation. Let's create a work plan rotation. Click Work Plan Rotations under Workforce Management. Click Add. In the Work Plan Rotation name box, enter a unique name for the work plan rotation. Under Start Date, click Calendar. Select the date on which to start the rotating work plan. This date is the starting date from which the work plan rotation is effective while scheduling. Optionally, to end the work plan rotation on a specific day, Enable the Set End Date checkbox. Under End Date, click Calendar and select the date to end the work plan rotation. Let's add work plans. Click on Edit. The Edit Work Plans dialog box opens. In the Available column, 
Either add specific work plans by searching for and selecting each work plan to include in the rotation. Or, to add all available work plans to the rotation, click Add All. Click OK. After you add work plans to a rotation, you can optionally assign agents to it. Having already adding the agent we wanted to in the work plan, we will not be adding agents to the rotation. Now, let's turn our focus to forecasts. Forecasts help you plan how many interactions to expect in future weeks. Forecast data includes such metrics as pattern, volume, and average handle time. Click Forecasts under Workforce Management. In the upper right corner, click the Business Unit list and select the desired management unit. To change the time zone in which you view data, in the upper right corner select the Current Time Zone list. Click Add. The Add Forecast page opens. At the end of the Forecast Start Week box, click the Calendar and then click to highlight a week for the forecast. In the Number of Weeks box, select from 1 to 6 weeks. In the Forecast Duration box, Enable a checkbox if you want to use the short-term interval forecast for scheduling. Under Scheduling, to use the forecast for scheduling, enable the checkbox. This checkbox can be enabled after you create the forecast within the Forecast List view. In the Description box, optionally include information to differentiate it from other forecasts for the same week. Under Creation Method, do one of the following. To automatically create the forecast using the best method, select Automatic Best Method Selection. To create the forecast using previously captured historical genesis cloud data and specifying a historical index weighting, select Weighted Historical Index. To create the forecast using data from a CSV file and specifying a historical index weighting, select Weighted Historical Index with Source Data Import. To import a final forecast that you created externally, select Browse and then select the CSV file to import for a maximum of six weeks. Click Add Forecast. The forecast then appears. Next, let's dig into time off settings. You can add, edit, or remove a time off limit for one or more dates. A management unit can only have one time off limit per day. Click on Time Off Plans under Workforce Management, then click on the management unit in the upper right corner and click Add. Use the filter and sort options to locate the dates to add. At the top right corner of the grid, click the Save icon. In the Time Off Plan name box, Type a descriptive name for the time off plan. In the HRIS integration section, if applicable, do the following. In the HR system list, select the HRIS integration. In the HR system time off type list, select the time off type. In the activity code association section, click Edit. The Edit Activity Code Association dialog box opens. In the available column, do the following. To associate an activity code to the time off plan, click the activity code. To search for an activity code to associate to the time off plan, in the Search for Time Off Codes box, begin typing the activity code and then select it from the results. To add all available activity codes to the time off plan, click Add All. To remove an activity code from the time off plan, in the selected column, click the activity code to remove. To remove all activity codes from the time off plan, click Remove All. Click OK. Under the Auto Approval Rule section, do one of the following. To ensure that the auto approval rule never applies to time off requests that use the selected activity codes, click Never. Choosing this option requires you to approve time off requests associated to the selected activity codes manually. To ensure that the auto approval rule always applies to time off requests that use the selected activity codes, click Always. Choosing this option causes the system to auto approve all time off requests, even when they exceed the remaining time off limit on the requested time off dates. To apply the auto approval rule to time off requests according to the time off limit, do the following. Click According to Time Off Limit. Use the days before start to expire from waitlist arrows to set the number of days before the time off request starts to expire the request from the waitlist. When the requests expire, the system changes the status to pending waitlist window closed. Click Save. We will now create a time off request. Under Workforce Management, click Time Off Requests. In the upper right corner, click the Management Unit list and then click a Management Unit. To change the time zone in which you view data, in the upper right corner select the Current Time Zone list. Click Add. The Add Time Off Request page opens. To choose the agent or agents for which the time off request applies, click Select Agents. The Add Agents dialog box opens. Click the Activity Code list and choose the activity code to apply to the request. 
in the counts as paid time field indicate whether the time off request is for paid or unpaid time off. By default, the toggle is set to the value specified in the activity code configuration. In the type field, select whether the request is full day or partial day. In the dates section, click add dates. The add dates dialog box appears. Select the applicable dates. In the length section, enter the length of the time off request per day in the hours and minutes fields. To save the request and return to the time off requests page, click save. Since we have finished creating time off requests, we can look at schedules. To navigate to the schedules view, click schedules under workforce management. The last schedule generation attempts show at the top of the page. Status is the current state of the last load-based schedule generation, either completed, canceled, failed, or an estimate of how much of the schedule generation is complete. Start date shows the date it begins. Number of weeks is the total number of weeks in the specified schedule. Type is the type of schedule created. Generation start time is the date and time the schedule was generated. Completion time is the data and time it was completed. Description is a description of the schedule. Generation started by is the name of the administrator that generated the schedule. Generation results are a list of warnings compiled. Click to open. Clicking on it opens a window that displays any issues. On the schedules list, you can refresh the list of displayed schedules. Start date is the schedule's start date. Click the date to open a schedule. Number of weeks is the total number of weeks in a specified schedule. Published indicates whether the schedule is published. Date created is the date and time that the schedule was created. The schedule may or may not be published. Date modified is the last date and time that the schedule was modified. Modified by is the name of the person who last modified the schedule. Description is a descriptive information about the schedule if entered. Generation results displays generation warnings for the selected schedule. Short-term forecast is if a short-term forecast is associated with the schedule, it appears here. Click the link to open a specified forecast. Let's generate a schedule. Click Generate. Let's create a schedule with forecast. The Generate Schedule page opens. Click the Calendar button at the end of the Schedule Start Week box and select the Start Week. Click the arrows at the end of the Number of Weeks box to indicate the schedule length from 1 to 6 weeks. Add a description for the schedule. Click the Scheduling Method list and select Create Schedule with Forecast. Under Select Forecast, click the forecast on which to base the schedule. Click Generate. Next, let's review the schedule we just created. Some available options depend on the current schedule view. In the Schedule Editor, to view available options, click the arrow at the end of the toolbar or the Select Action menu. Assign shift assigns ships from one agent to another. Replace ships with activity replaces an entire shift or ships with a selected activity. Replace activity replaces an activity or activities with another activity in a schedule. Swap ships swaps one agent's ships with another agent. Copy activity to agents copies an activity to one or more agents in the schedule. Copy ship to agents copies an agent's shift to one or more agents. Copy ship to days copies an agent's shift to one or more days. Remove selected removes one or more agent ships from the selected schedule. Remove activity code in range removes one or more activities from a single or multiple ships within a specific time range. Add agents includes more agents in the selected schedule. Remove agents excludes one or more agents in the selected schedule. Show time off request differences views and synchronizes time off requests. Show Keyboard Shortcuts views the list of keyboard shortcuts that help administrators manage schedule editing. View Adherence information in the Schedule Editor is a view by day and view by date range. You can customize the Schedule Editor to show agent adherence information for past schedules. View Late information in the Schedule Editor allows you to view the late explanations request for the next work activity submitted by the agent for specific categories. You can further approve or deny these requests. Change the schedule view by selecting to view a schedule by day, date range, week, or vertical view in the schedule editor. View schedule by management unit or work team by selecting work teams or management units in the schedule editor. Review scheduled, forecast, and difference counts based on a forecast. Details about schedules, forecast, and difference counts are listed in the schedule grid. Review scheduled and forecast counts and daily summaries, and depending on your view, the schedule editor displays metrics that help you analyze and plan schedules.
View agent information allows you to click an agent name to view that agent's assigned skills and languages. View adherence information in the schedule editor customizes the schedule editor to show agent adherence information for past schedules. Add conformance and adherence columns in the agent area. View an agent's paid hours per week. Depending on your view, you can see various details about an agent's paid hours for a specific day or week. Add an activity to one or more agents allows you to choose the time frame in which to add the activity to shifts. Or let the system recommend the most appropriate times based on coverage, and then choose from the list of times to which to add the activity. Adjust an activity's length within a shift. Modify activity details and edit default values for non-default activities. Use Zoom to adjust the level of schedule detail to see the current schedule in more detail, or zoom out to see a larger time period for the current schedule. Undo or redo unsaved changes to a schedule one at a time, up to the last save. As an admin, you may not be responsible for managing or creating schedules, but having a better understanding around schedules will assist the supervisors that have to create and manage them. Next, we will take a look at the Shift Trades view. Shift trades enable agents to trade complete ships with other agents. You can choose whether to allow automatic approval for trade requests or queue them for administrator review. You can also set a minimum time between shift trade approval and ship start. In previous hands-on exercises is where we created the permissions and settings if ship trades were allowed. From those settings is where the view you see will populate. You can configure agent matching criteria for trade requests. If the trade meets a constraint, then choose how to process the request. Matching requirements can be queue membership, assigned language, assigned skills, or ability to handle the same planning groups. You can choose any combination of requirements or none. For example, you can specify that trades only occur between agents with the same language, set of skills, queue membership, and the ability to handle the same planning groups. Shift trade rules include the following constraints, which you can set to allow, deny, or send for administrator review. Ship trades with unequal paid hours, ship trades that are one-sided, ship trades that result in minimum weekly paid time violations, or ship trades that result in maximum weekly paid time violations. For ship trade rules, if you enable automatic review and set a constraint to allow, then the system can approve the trade. If you disable automatic review, then the system sends the request to an administrator for review. Activity category rules determine what to do with each activity type when an agent trades a ship with another agent. Determine whether to allow agents to trade ships with certain activities, replace activities in the traded ships with other activities, or leave the activities unchanged. We're going to shift our gears and review performance monitoring and adherence next. Intraday monitoring enables you to see the differences between what was originally forecast and what actually occurs in real time for the current day. Administrators can make informed schedule adjustments throughout the day to suit changing conditions. For example, add agents to improve service levels or send agents home if too many agents are available. Intraday monitoring is mostly beneficial for monitoring the current day's actual activities, but can also be useful to view data from past or future days. In the graph at the top, you are able to view the difference. Graphs are not available for the answered, abandoned, or completed columns. Use the up and down arrows on the right side of the graph to configure the valid range. Values outside the valid range appear in red. The differences of percentages, such as service level and occupancy display as a percentage difference, not as a percent of a percent. Values in red indicate that the metric is out of the acceptable range. In the graph below, that range is plus or minus 10% as shown to the far right of the graph. Below each metric, the system includes lines that indicate the last five intervals. Clicking the gear icon in the upper right opens the display option dialog box. From the display interval, set the interval you want to display. From the time format list, choose to set the time format in duration. Use the up and down arrows to choose the digits of precision. Use the up and down arrows to set the minimum target percent for answered interactions. Use the up and down arrows to set the maximum target percent for abandoned interactions. Use the up and down arrows to set the minimum target percent for completed interactions. Click OK. On the bottom of the window, shows the metrics by the interval that is set in the display options, showing you that interval's metrics. This view allows you to see potential issues throughout the day that can be addressed. Real-time adherence is a common contact center metric that compares agents' current status against their scheduled work time. 
Monitoring adherence in real time provides contact center supervisors the right information to help analyze agent status and make any necessary changes to the schedule for the rest of the day. The real time adherence page combines adherence overview and agent details in one view. The overview includes the following charts Adherence The number and percentage of agents in adherence, out of adherence, unscheduled, ignored, or unknown. Impact the number and percentage of agents with a positive, negative, neutral, or unknown impact on performance. Impact helps supervisors determine if out-of-adherence agents are helping, hurting, or have no impact on the company. Scheduled activities. The activities included in the current schedule and the number and percentage of agents in each activity. Actual activities. The current activities and the number and percentage of agents in each activity. Pause over each chart to view specific agent figures and percentages in more detail. Below the charts, view individual details about each agent's adherence to the schedule. Use the search, filter, and sort options to narrow the list of agents. The agent column is the name of the schedule agent. Adherence status column is the current adherence status of agents in the management unit. Adherence duration column is the amount of time represented in days, hours, minutes, and seconds, that the adherence exception has been happening. Status duration column is the agent's length of time and the current status. Scheduled activity column is the list of scheduled activities. Actual activity column is the list of actual agent activity. Status column is the agent's current status. Cues is the cue to which the agent belongs. Secondary status column is if an agent sets a secondary status, that status appears in this column. Impact column is the result of out-of-adherence agents on performance. Impact helps supervisors determine if out-of-adherence agents are helping, hurting, or have no impact on the company. The three vertical dots or more allows you to show or hide columns or reset the columns to default settings. Click and pin moves the agent to the top of the real-time adherence view. Historical adherence provides contact center managers and administrators the ability to see how well agents follow their schedules in the past. Genesis Cloud collects historical statistics about agents in the management units that you select, such as adherence, conformance exceptions, exception duration, and impact of adherence to the organization. The historical adherence view is essentially a reporting view of real-time adherence. This view tracks agent presence from the past and compares it to their schedule. The date filter displays the week selection done in the previous selection. You can, however, modify the date range by clicking the date icon. By adherence drop-down views agent details either by adherence or conformance. By agents drop-down to select the adherence view based on the number of agents in the currently selected management unit or by the total number of exceptions for the selected time range. You can view the exception data of an agent by clicking the corresponding links in the exceptions column in the table below. Average adherence percentage displays the average adherence percentage of the agents in the management unit for the selected time range. Target Adherence Percentage displays the target adherence percentage to be achieved in the selected time range. Adherence over time bar chart shows adherence percentage for the selected period. Click or point to a bar to see adherence percentages about a specific date in the selected range. The bottom displays all of the individual agents and their adherence, conformance, exceptions with duration, as well as the net impact they have on the average. Like real-time adherence, Historical adherence is another tool to assist supervisors in spotting potential weaknesses and ensuring adherence is being maintained. Next, we will walk through the historical shrinkage view. The shrinkage view displays the data for a management unit or work team based on your date range and granularity selection. You can view a graphical representation of the scheduled and actual shrinkage details for shrinkage over time and aggregated shrinkage. When you select shrinkage over time, you can view the bars that display information based on the granularity that you select. Click the image to enlarge. The table below the graph displays the data that you see in the graphs. You can sort the columns. However, if all zeros exist in any column, sorting does not occur. Click the preset option to view data for a select day. If no data exists, then a blank table appears. When you click any of the bar or dots in the line of the graph, you can view a more detailed view of the breakdown data by activity for the particular day or week based on the granularity that you select. As you can see, there isn't much to this report, but a powerful tool that aggregates data to compare to planned and actual activities so the supervisor is better able to get actual and planned aligned in the future. 
Last in our Workforce Management module, Historical Data Import. Use this tool to upload historical interaction data. The system uses this data to generate forecasts with the automatic best method option. Click the calendar under Historical Data and Date and choose the latest date and time to use in the import file. Under File to Upload, click Browse. Navigate to the location that contains the file you want to import and select it. Click Import. After the file imports, the validation process begins. The Import History table provides status and validation details about the imported data. Data files that are validated successfully take up to 24 hours to import. The import process, when in pending status, completes at approximately 3 a.m. local time in each region. The file must include data in exactly 15-minute intervals. In this area is where the import will display with the status. To recap, this module is designed to provide you with knowledge around setting up and configuring with things such as business and management units, understanding forecasts and how they can be utilized, time off limits, plans and requests, and how they tie into forecasting. Also, walking you through setting up schedules and scheduling agents and reviewing the performance, both real-time and historical, to get a complete picture of your contact center. Remember, this module gives you insight to what the supervisors setting these items up may be looking for. This allows you to provide support to them, should they need it. Thank you for completing Module 12. In Module 13, we will discuss Outbound. See you there.